What's up everyone? I'm really excited to be launching my very first iOS game on the App Store here very shortly. I wanted to take you through the development process of how I built this game completely with Swift and Xcode. Uh, and to see the life of the app uh, come to be from the very beginning, the very first line of code written, hopefully throughout most of the rest of this until it's actually released on the App Store. Um, so the app itself is called Crazy Color Clash. Uh, you can go to crazycolorclash.com and download the beta as we speak. I'm really excited about this project. I've probably put about 100 hours into it over the last month as it's kind of consumed my life. Um, but very excited about the possibilities of this. Super fun game. We've been able to play test this with quite a few people who have really enjoyed it. And there's some in-app purchases. There's all sorts of different fun stuff that I've learned across the way. And so I wanted to share with you how that's gone and hopefully it's uh, helpful to somebody else. So let's go ahead and dive in see what it's all about, and uh, you know, see it take, take shape here. All right, we're gonna get started with creating a new project. Pretty straightforward. You open up Xcode, select a new project, and then start to fill in the blanks of your configuration. And the first thing I wanted to do was actually just get something on the screen. So I went ahead and did a little brief hello world. And then I went and started working on the menu. Um, I actually had quite a bit of trouble with the menu initially. Um, so I went ahead and skipped the menu, decided to come back to it, and started to look into how to build the game itself. Um, there's a lot of different controls on the right-hand side of Xcode you can see here that I initially played with and decided to skip those. And eventually just started digging into the code itself. So I've got the two different color backgrounds that you can see here. Um, you can see the score of player two is actually upside down. So there was quite a bit of like figuring out what each uh, enum does, what each function does, etc. Kind of exploring my options here. And there's actually quite a bit of this video that is cut out. There's about 10 hours worth of video that I have that is uh, not included here. Um, a lot of trial and error, a lot of me just kind of trying stuff to see what kind of errors get returned, what pop-ups happen, um, autocomplete, etc. Because when I'm learning a new language like Swift, I kind of want to just get involved with it as much as possible. So um, sometimes that even means just completely skipping looking at the documentation uh, just to see like what happens when you break something, uh, what kind of errors do you get, etc. So here I'm working on the actual colors because eventually we want the game to have uh, a variety of different colors and we want it to be able to cycle through those on a timer. And so here I've got it where I tap uh, on the button, I'm doing mouse clicks at present, uh, that it swaps the color and also uh, increments the score. So we're starting to get some kind of uh, gameplay going here, but obviously it's not uh, exactly how we want it. Um, I want to be able to pair both color names with the background color because the whole point of the game, the premise, the concept is that a color name is going to pop up on the screen and you need to pair that with the background color to get a correct tap. So what we need to do is we need to build a mapping set or, or basically uh, if the color name is blue, for instance, if the background color matches that, uh, then we, we give the player a point. And if it doesn't, then we take a point away. And so here I'm building the individual lists um, and eventually we'll come back to actually pair these together in a mapping. Uh, but right now, just trying to get stuff on the screen um, is the, the biggest thing that we're looking to do. Um, and that's typically how it goes with a lot of coding projects. You start with the simplest implementation of something just to see uh, if you can get that working. And then you come back, you refactor, you make it uh, work how you want to. And so here we can see that I've got the name on the right hand side, the simulator there. Uh, I was able to flip player number two, uh, the correct orientation as well. And so now I'm just making sure that I can actually iterate or it should be increment the player score uh, if something, or rather if the two color name and color background match. And so we're gonna go ahead and tweak that here. Um, a lot of the errors that you'll see throughout this is again, me just kind of figuring out how things work. Uh, there's two warnings on the screen right now. Um, Warnings are fine during development and implementation because we can always come back and fix them. Um, again, just kind of figuring out how things work. Uh, with Swift, there's var versus let, there's constants, there's uh, changeable variables, etc. And so 
Uh, I just kind of left those for a while until I could come back to them and determine what I wanted to do with them. Uh, but right now we're working on the score so that we can set it up correctly um, depending on what player taps what button, etc. So now um, I wanted to go back and give another shot at the menu. Um, it didn't have the understanding of how swift views work. Um, so you can see here, I actually was able to get both the menu and uh, the game on the same screen. Um, and then I think I gave up again and, and came back to that later. Um, here I'm blowing up my app with all sorts of fun, different errors. Uh, so really just trying to see what I can do, pulling back various details. As you can see, I'm commenting stuff out to get it back to a working state. And I'm going back to something I know that is correct and then slowly um, adding to it. You can see I'm having a, a good old time here where I've ac accidentally put them side by side instead of on top of each other. So really just playing with all the different kinds of uh, variables to see what we can do. Uh, at present, I'm trying to get the game clock working. So every second, the color of the background of each player should actually be switching. Um, so we've got the tapping correct, we've got the names to pop up, we've got the colors, which is great, but now we want to actually implement um, the ability for it to do it automatically. And so we've actually got that here. As you can see, every second the background changes. However, I accidentally still have it where if you tap the button, it cycles through a bunch of colors very quickly, which is not uh, ideal. And so we want to make sure that we actually fix that. So I played with the timer quite a bit here, uh, found out that timers with Swift, especially if you start mix and matching a bunch of them, don't like to play well. Um, so I tried all sorts of different timers. I've got a game timer and then I've got a um, background color swap timer. Um, and so I found out that mixing timers isn't great and decided to pull it all out and go back to a single timer. So the UI is finally taking shape here. Um, this is kind of more or less how the end game will look, a uh, very rough draft at least. Um, we've got the different colors, they're full screen, the tapping uh, isn't working as you can see here. Uh, there's no scoring happening really, um, but the colors are switching correctly. And when they are pressed, I was able to fix the bug um, where they went away. Um, or rather where they stayed the same color and so they they didn't keep going uh, then we've got a game over screen which is great and then i'm filling out some to do's here uh, namely all sorts of different bugs to fix features to implement etc this is me going back to trying to implement a menu um, as you can see here it kind of works uh, unfortunately i did it incorrectly or rather i did it in a, in a fashion that's not good for a game where i implemented this navigation view um, so normally in, a, in an app, you would have maybe four or five uh, navigation buttons at the bottom, and then you'd have a back button at the top left if you wanted to go through lists. Um, so that kind of worked and, and was a good place to start uh, because I was able to get the menu uh, and then the game as well, but I didn't want a back button in the game. Um, we wanted to completely replace the view, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, I then started to build out the menu a bit here. You can see there's a fast mode toggle. Uh, I eventually ripped this out completely because I just decided that the game needed to have just a single speed um, for various different balancing reasons. Uh, but it was fun to play with the toggle and figure out, you know, what kind of settings do we tweak if it's in fast mode? Um, this eventually became hard mode, etc. cetera. Um, but again, it was completely removed eventually. So that's pretty much it with the app thus far. Uh, we've gone ahead and created a menu. We've created a couple of buttons. We've created the ability for the color names and the background colors to switch automatically every second. And then the scoring also works. Uh, at the very end of the game, we have an alert that pops up that says game over. And so the very core MVP kind of components of the game are in place and ready to go. Next time we'll be diving into some other stuff like power-ups, uh, the ability to complete that menu. We'll have a score view at the very end uh, and other aspects of the game that need to be added. So uh, we've got the basics here and we're going to continue to build on that in the very next devlog. So let's make sure that you tune back in if you want to continue to see the development. Uh, make sure to go to crazycolorclash.com to download the beta right now and test it for free. Uh, and if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me. See you next time.